So what has Xavi got cooking for Barcelona this season? Against Osasuna, he used a 4-3-3. Kind of a 4-2-3-1 against Hatafe. Against Cadiz, it looks something like a 3-4-2-1 with De Jong dropping back. With some interesting players to fit into the system. Including an absolute heap in the midfield positions. It's not hard to see why that Xavi is still experimenting. So after watching a couple of Barca games and having a look at the squad, it's time for me to give it a go. And it turned out alright, you know. You go ahead and be so to get this done, this is the way we're going to approach it. We want to get a max out of João Cancelo down that right hand side. A constant supply to Lewandowski. We've got to incorporate all those midfield options and of course, keep playing the bass away like Xavi will. After reading a lot of La Liga experts, what Barca were crying out for was a right back. Cancelo made his debut at the weekend and almost instantly started with the assists. Now as you can see, my Cancelo has rocked in 24 assists and most of them were just like that clip you saw, down the right into Lua. Time after time, down that right hand side, whipping it across. Absolutely lethal and you'll notice how high his start point is. He's the main focal point down that right hand side. This one match alone, he notched three assists and had five clear cut chances created. You saw Lewandowski benefiting there. In fact, he scored 49 goals through the season. Another new man, Gundogan, 23 goals from central midfield. And this is what we came up with. It might look a little bit extreme, but if you think Barca are going to be dominating 90% of the matches they play, you can properly get away with an aggressive tactic like this. So from kickoff, you can see the way the defensive structure looks. You have your two centre backs, one and two, and just in front of them is the defensive midfielder. Now he will drop back if needed, allowing Cancelo and Balde to bomb on, but look at their start positions, both of them, already high up. Now as a word of caution, because the two wing backs are so high up, there is the possibility that you're going to concede space down these sides. Like this attack shows from Letico Madrid, Galan gets it here, cuts inside, now look at this gap down here. So if you're going to play a tactic such as this, you've got to be prepared that you're going to concede a few. Ball over the top and you can see the space that Morata gets in. So that is the big weakness of a formation set up like this. In sustained pressure, however, so if your opposition are building up a bit slower like Atletico Madrid are here, you can see the back four still in place. Cancelo drops back, Balde drops back. So you've still got your four with your enforcer in front of them and then your four across. So it does turn into effectively 4-1-4-1 in defensive situations. When it's not a fast break, when it is a fast break, that's when these areas down here can be exploited. However, when you win the ball back, look at the options you get. Gundogan finds De Jong, Pedri has a little look, Gundian gets it. Now we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six on the way to back him up. We'll play it on. Lewandowski now got it and now he's got overlaps and underlaps coming from the outside in Balde. Underlaps from De Jong, you've got Rafinha out wide. You've got like six, seven players all backing him up. What it leads to is one of the advanced wing backs pinging it in. I went through a couple of the potential pitfalls of the tactic there, but look at through these results, you can see you are going to score an absolute bucket, bucket full of goals. Remember, 126 in the league, and we only conceded 21. In tougher games, there is a potential, obviously, to drop the two wing-backs back and go a bit more solid, but I really wanted to dominate and play the Barca away. I think this was the best way to do it. Got our two centre-backs with the half-back dropping back. Remember, that can be Frankie de Jong, if you want a bit more of an expressive player in there. We've got natural overlaps from Balde and Cancelo. You can add them into team instructions if you want. I've done that myself. I've got De Jong as an advanced playmaker. Now this is the key one here, Pedri and Gundogan. It's so hard to get all these midfielders into one team. So what have we done? We've gone to Pedri, go to his player instructions up here. And you can see down there, we've got him swapping position with Gundogan. So throughout the match, these two are basically swapping around. Super fluid, keeping the system fluid and allowing them both to play in their preferred position. Gundogan scored 24 goals, remember, and Pedri helped himself to 16 with 16 assists, so it worked well. What you get with a super high position from Cancelo and Balde is it means that these two guys here can tuck in way more. So you'll see Cancelo dropping 
round him like that and you'll see Rafinha coming inside like that. Pedri doing the same. In effect, it turns into something like this. Super aggressive, really hard to defend against. And you can see from Rafinha's statistics that he didn't half benefit with 34 assists and 21 goals. So that's the way I would fit all these players into it. Obviously there's different things you could do. You might want to change the role of Lewandowski to more of a drop-off striker if you're not seeing enough of the ball. You might want to drop these two back. But that's the kind of template I've been working off. I guess at this point I have a challenge for you. It's to fill these other two places here, slots two and three, with a potential away tactic we can use in tougher games because the games where we struggled a bit were away games, tough games against the likes of Atletico Madrid and Man City, which a lot of people will do, but I wanted a better challenge out of it. So there's obviously things we can do to get a better away version of the tactic. So there it is. There's my early Barca tactic. I've no doubt it will change. It will score you a bucket load of goals, especially in home matches. We just need to lock down that away version.